Today we're going to be checking out Ghosty and its configuration. It's been all the rage recently and for a good reason a ZIG based terminal that, that strives to be a fast and feature rich terminal emulator. The primary goal is actually to do with their backend. We're going to get into this and talk about this but let's go and start up a Ghosty session real quick and I'm also going to put up a show key in the top right corner so you can follow along with me as we're configuring Ghosty for ourselves. Now the first thing I want to mention is Ghosty has a default config file which would be located under the home users config directory. So for example, if you wanted to, there's the hamburger menu and you can actually click open configuration. This is actually gonna create a new configuration file if you've never made one for Ghosty. I typically like to use whatever editor I have on the system. For example, I'm using KDE here, so I have KWrite. And now it actually created a new config file. And where is this config file located? Well, I personally like using Vim, so I'm gonna show you where that's located. Here I'm in the home users directory. You can't see the config because it's a hidden file that's located. If I do .config, then I'll actually be able to get to this. And if I tab a few times, I can see that Ghosty now exists. If it doesn't exist and you wanna create a new file, new config file, for example, I'm just gonna remove the .config Ghosty directory. Reason being is I just wanna show you how to create your own. So if you wanted to, you could do something like touch here and create a new config file for yourself. Under the home users directory, we can just use the tilde for that to make sure that we're actually using the home users directory dot config slash ghosty, and then we can just call it config. Now I can't create that because the directory doesn't exist. So we have to make that directory first, mkdir, and then we're gonna do tilde dot config and create that ghosty or ghost tty directory first. And then finally, let's rerun that touch command to create the config file. Now everything went through. Again, a little easier if you just hit open configuration and if you don't have one, it's gonna create that file for you. But I just wanted to show you where it's located. Now I'm gonna use Vim in order to actually change things up. Let's edit that config file. So one thing I wanna do real quick, just as an example, I'm gonna hit the insert and do background equal to, and then some value 1C2021. And then I'm gonna save and exit out of here. Just understand that it's a key value pair that you enter for all the configuration setup. What does that mean? It just means that this is a key and this is the value of that key. So there's special keys that we can access and we can put values in depending on what key we're selecting. Nothing hard there. I'll walk you through a few of them here in a moment. I'm gonna save and exit. And then in order to reload this, I have to go up here to the hamburger menu and hit the reload configuration. You'll notice that that changed the background to be a little darker. If you ever need to go back to default, you can edit that config file. Again, I'm gonna use Vim here, and I'm going to now just put a pound or hashtag in front, escape, save, and it should go away after I reload the config one more time. It's a little hard to notice because I'm going between a gray to a darker black, but I actually like that background color more. To be honest, that lets me see things a little better. You can also, again, open the configuration and just make edits here in your default text editor and take out the background. Now let's get into some more advanced configuration to make Ghosty look even better. But before we do, if you haven't already installed Ghosty, I have a video on how to do that. As well as talking about the project, I'll make sure to post the link in the description below so you can check it out. Let's now continue to do one of the funnest things and edit the theme here in Ghosty. How do we do that? Fairly simple. First, there are special commands in order to list what's available here in Ghosty. How do you find these? Well, you can go to the terminal API under documentation. It's overall pretty good. The man pages are actually better. There's a configuration overview and you can look through the various different ways of configuring Ghosty where files are located and some examples here. It's overall very good. It is missing some references, not a big deal, but here are some special commands that list the values in the command line interface that we're gonna use. For example, list fonts here. There's also one for list themes. Look at that. Ghosty plus list themes should get us all the themes that are located on the system for Ghosty. You can actually install extra themes if you want in the home users directory dot config Ghosty themes directory. But let's go look at the default themes first. Back here in Fedora under Ghosty, I'm going to first list those themes. Again, we just type in Ghosty and then plus list dash themes. Not sure why we have the plus in front here. That doesn't make too much sense to me, but whatever. Anyways, once we do that, we get the Ghosty Theme Preview app, which is a fantastic app. It allows us to see the varying different themes that are currently available on the system. There's quite a few themes that are available here. I typically like a little bit of a darker theme. 
So I'm gonna look through here until I find one that I like. And for an example here, Chester looks pretty good to me. You can check out and see the formatting here on the bottom right, because they open up a file called zigzag.zig for you, which is some code so you can kind of tell what the syntax coloring looks like with this particular theme. Personally, I like this Mirage theme. It's subtle on the eyes, so I'm gonna go with this theme for an example. Of course, choose whatever you want. The only thing you really need to remember is when to find a theme that you like, you need to make sure you copy this name right here because you can't set it from here. If I press enter or I try to choose it, nothing happens. This is just a preview mode. So remember which theme you want. So if I want the mellow theme or even let's say the Mirage theme, I'm actually gonna go with Mirage here. I'm gonna hit escape, that's gonna go back. Then I'm gonna open up that config file once again hamburger menu, open configuration, or just open it up in the home user config ghosty directory. And once I've pressed enter, I'm actually gonna create a new key value pair. In order to set a theme, I must type in theme equal to, and then you wanna put quotes around this one just because you may have spaces and it's not gonna recognize the key value pair if there's spaces in the theme name. So I said Mirage, and that's what I'm gonna set it to. I'm gonna save and exit, and then again, reload the configuration file. There we go. Everything is a little lighter now, and we can definitely try out different ones. So I'm gonna open things back up, and I suggested Mellow as well. Let me see if that one has a little bit of a better contrast on the text. So I'm gonna again go over here, reload configuration, and it does. So I'm gonna actually stick with the Mellow theme just, just because the contrast is a little better. And then instead of having to go up here all the time and hitting reload configuration, you can do shift control plus with a comma. I don't like that. So I'm gonna actually change that key binding. That's the next thing we're gonna do. We're gonna adjust key bindings in the configuration file. And then I'm gonna show you a few that I love putting in because it just makes life easier when navigating the terminal. But before we do, make sure to smash that like button to get this video out to more people. Also think about subscribing below. You wouldn't wanna miss another video. YouTube can get finicky and not show you a new video. And with that, let's continue to the key binding. So for a key binding, it's a little more intense, but I'm gonna walk you through it. Key bind equal to now we have to specify the key binding that we want to use. For example, I want to use control plus R and I'm actually going to call a function and that's the reload underscore config function. So anytime you have a function, you're going to have underscores. Anytime you list things, you're going to have dashes. It can get a little confusing, but not a big deal. As we all know, functions really can't have dashes, at least in most programming languages. Anyways, key bind equal to control plus R. That's the key binding reference that I want to use. And what do we want to do with that? We want to reload the config. This here is a key value pair. This is the value, this is the key, and that should be enough to now set the key binding control R to reload our config. Can it do it? Well, first off, we need to reload the config one more time. And how can we tell that control R actually works? Well, if I type in control R, you can see that I typed it in and it said reloaded the configuration. Also, another way to check is hit the hamburger menu. Notice that this right here says control R now. What I don't like is it says control capital R. There's no shift here, so I don't know why it's showing us a capital R. That needs to be fixed, but now we can easily make changes to our configuration without worrying too much. I wanna spend a minute and talk about the Ghosty project because there is a underlying library called libghosty, which is probably the most important part of Ghosty itself. This right here is a cross-platform library that allows Ghosty to be used as a library for devs. The goal here is actually to be able to embed Ghosty into things like code editors or completely make your own terminal from libghosty. If there's some feature or something that you like, instead of reinventing the wheel and working on all the low level components that a terminal emulator needs, you can leverage libghosty and build a high quality application instead of having to implement the entire terminal emulation code from scratch. So another example is maybe make a web-based terminal by using the library. This is the overall goal of Ghosty. It's not actually to make a terminal emulator that's great or anything like that. It's just to create tools for developers to be able to use and focus on building those applications without needing to worry about how to actually create a terminal emulator. It's really this API that's a standalone library, which is hopefully the future benefit that developers gonna have for being able to apply to a broad range of applications instead of building their own terminal emulators. And that's actually the creators, Mitchell Hashimoto's philosophy and overall goal for this project. Now that we're aware of really the overall idea here, let's talk about adding a few more bindings. I'm gonna do a key bind equal to, now this one's a little different, 
I'm gonna do Control, and then I'm gonna do Up. That just stands for Up Arrow. And what is that gonna do? I want this to split the window pane up, basically create one above the current location. I don't like the default key bindings for this, and I think a couple of them are actually missing. We'll check that out in a moment, but we can do Control plus Up equal to New underscore split, and then we do a colon up. What this means is it's gonna call function with the parameter up. Now we can use this same format to do down equal new split and then down key bind. Might as well do it for the other two motions as well. So we have left equal new split left and finally key bind equal control plus right equal to new split and right. All right, now that we have all these key bindings, I'm gonna do control R to reload my configuration. As you can tell below here, it did. And now I should be able to use control and up to create a new pane. Control right to create a new right pane. And finally, control down to create a new down pane. Much easier that way, at least in my opinion, to create these panes because it is a wonderful feature here in Ghosty. I like how they've built the panes in as well as tabs up top. If you wanna use tabs instead, you can. This one's easy, control tab is the way to get around between tabs, just like you would in other applications. Very easy to use. Now that we've done a few of the key bindings and understand how to make changes, I'm gonna show you how to list the key bindings so you know what you have control over. So if we do ghosty plus list underscore key binds, says unknown CLI action. Well, I must've mistyped something. And that was my fault. Again, I'm getting confused with underscores versus dashes. It needs to be dash key binds. All right, there we go. Now we can go up and down and look through all the varying different key binds that we have access. If you wanna resize a split screen, well, it's super control shift up. I don't like how many keys you have to press here. I probably shortened this down myself and I have in the past. And that just adjusts depending on if you hit up, left, down or right, 10 pixels in any direction. If we keep continuing down, we have other things like go to a split. So control alt up. Control Alt Left, which is fine. Maybe Control Shift would make sense too. And there's many different key bindings here that you can all look through. Now, the one thing that I'll mention is you can always run this command and see when your own get added in. Notice we have Control plus R, Control plus Left, Right, Up, Down. Those are the new ones we added recently in order to make things run. Very good. Now, a lot of you might want to change the text up and we can do that as well. But before we do, let's actually list the fonts available on the system. And the way I did that, I think I went through that a little quick there, is ghosty space plus list, remember, hyphen fonts. All right, with that listed out, now we can go through and search and find a font that we want. The way it's labeled here is the font family is up top and then the fonts available under that font family exist below. A lot of fonts here, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but let's just change it up just to understand what it would look like. I suggest copying and pasting if you can, so let's go over here so we don't really have to remember it. I'm gonna do the Vim config, ghosty config back in here. I'm gonna add right down here, it should be font dash family equal to, I'm just gonna paste this in, Vizier Matin Black. Don't forget the quotes around here or it will not work because there's a space. Just get in the habit. Control X, exit out, and then Control R to reload. Notice that the font changed. Very good. That looks overall good. Now there is a way to change the font size. I don't necessarily like this because I can just use control plus to increase the size or control minus to go back down. It's easy enough that I do not want to mess with the font sizes. Just use control plus or minus in order to adjust the font size by one pixel. Let's just look at the bash RC file just to get a kind of a feel for what the theming looks like here. And overall it looks pretty good to me. You can play around and change things as necessary. Maybe you like a different theme than I do but I do wanna reiterate some of the most helpful commands here. If you type in ghosty, again, plus list fonts, remember the dash, that'll list all your fonts available in the system. Dash list themes, that'll get you a preview for the themes. And plus list key binds is gonna get you all the key bindings for the current setup. And now you're well on your way to making ghosty look great. If you hit the documentations and you check out the configuration overview, Again, a great place to get started and understand what different things you can do in order to actually customize your Ghosty terminal. Now they say that out of the box, it shouldn't have to be themed, but I think to make it your own, you really do need to theme this thing and adjust some of the key bindings just to make life a little easier. 
There's so much to be edited. And now that you know how, make sure to smash that like button for the learning that you did. Don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't already. You wouldn't want to miss another video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple-to-read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.